Hoarded a ton of Spam at the beginning of the pandemic and I've been slowly using it up in all sorts of different recipes. I'm Jenny Dorsey. I'm a professional chef, writer, and founder of a nonprofit community think tank called Studio Atau. And today I'll be showing you how to make one of my favorite recipes, Spam wontons in Spam chili oil. I love Spam. Spam is something that is produced here in the US and it really took off in World War II when it became one of the main like protein sources for military troops abroad. Spam became such a well-loved luncheon meat in places like South Korea or Japan or the Philippines and Hawaii where the US had military presence. Look at this beautiful block of Spam. It's nice and pale pink and it always has these like little ribbons on it from the can. Because it comes in such a nice block, you can carefully cut it and kind of keep them in little cubes. So we're just trying to get a little bit of color on the Spam. Nothing too crazy. So because Spam is already salty, you'll probably use less salt than you usually do. And then I'm gonna add soy sauce and mirin for some of that like Spam masubi flavor. And you do not have to cook Spam. It is ready to eat from the can. So if you're like in a hurry, you could just skip this step. I think it tastes a little nicer once you've cooked it, but it will taste great regardless. We're just gonna get this into kind of like a coarse, crumbly sort of texture. So just pulse a few times. So I'm gonna put this filling into a bowl and reserve it for later since I'm gonna get the rest of the filling done. Now I'm gonna cook up some leeks. Pardon my kind of awkward chopping today, so Usually at home, I actually stand on a stool because the counters are too tall for me. But in this video, I figured it would look really weird if I kept going up and down on my stool. So I'm just at a weird chopping angle. But fun fact, did you know kitchen counters are actually made for a person that is 5'8" because when they were first standardized, the average height of an American man was 5'8". And what's interesting now is they haven't actually changed the average counter height, but the average American man is no longer 5'8", and the average American woman is 5'4", so basically now kitchen counters are an awkward size for everyone, but we haven't done anything about it. So one of the nice things you can do with ginger, if you have kind of like a nice straight piece like this, is that you can kind of just go around it and peel it with your knife. Those outside pieces, can be used for something like ginger tea or stock, so it's not like you have to throw them away. We're just doing a quick little saute with some salt. And as that is going, I'm also gonna cut up my maitake mushroom. I really like maitake, or some sort of mushroom honestly doesn't have to be maitake because it adds a little bit like a meaty umami-ness, but because it's not actually meat, it gives a different umami than what a meat product was. We've got a little color going on with our veggies, so this looks pretty good. And I'm gonna transfer them over to the food processor. And now I'm just gonna add this over to my filling. For one of the last ingredients in the filling today, I have some Chinese celery. So this is a little different from the celery that you might be used to. The stalks are a little thinner and the leaves are bushier and the taste is a little bit more medicinal and zesty. So it adds this nice brightness to the filling that I really like. You can also just use regular celery. And the last thing I'm gonna add here is some Shepherd's Purse, which you can usually find frozen in Chinese grocery stores. If you do not have Shepherd's Purse, don't worry, just use like some frozen spinach. And you'll need to thaw it out. It's got tons of water in here, so you're gonna have to go squeeze it out. Again, a rough chop here, just like the Chinese celery before transferring into the food processor. I'm gonna just mix it all together. So you're just gonna season this filling to taste with a little bit of salt, soy sauce, Oh, I have some maple syrup. Maybe I'll use that. I also always recommend using a little bit more sugar than you think you need in your savory recipes because a lot of times when you go to like a restaurant and you're like, oh, it tastes so good, I don't know why, it's probably because there's more sugar in it than you expect. I sometimes like to add a little white balsamic vinegar because I feel like it adds like a nice sweetness that's quite subtle and also a little tanginess. I've done a quick reset and we're gonna wrap some wontons now. I have some wontons from a brand called Dynasty. So you can see the ones I got today. 
are kind of thick. You want to get the square ones, not the round wrappers. Round wrappers are for dumplings. The number one mistake I see with wonton wrapping is putting too much filling in the wonton wrapper because you're very eager and I understand because I also love a nice fat wonton. However, it structurally gives you some problems because they tend to explode. So I recommend maybe like a teaspoon. I have these like little baby spoons that I just found are like a good size. Wet the top and the bottom. You're gonna fold it over on itself. You're gonna put your thumb here, your middle finger here. You're gonna fold this over and then you're gonna pull these little edges together so that they can seal with a little bit of water. I feel like they look like little hats. And you just wanna keep them covered with your little damp paper towel as you're working. Now we have a few wontons and we're gonna hold them in the freezer. Now I'm gonna make the Spam chili oil that goes with these wontons. I'm gonna preheat the oven to 200 so that I can toast my dry chilies. This is just a quick toast, like 15 minutes. I'm also gonna slice up this onion, a half of a small onion, I would say, roughly. Garlic, similarly, this is very quick. My oven is almost preheated, so I'm going to get my chilies ready. These red chilies, they're labeled as like Chinese red chilies. These are usually Tianjin chilies. And then I also use Bayanti chili. It's a South Indian type of chili. I like these because they're pretty spicy still, but they're actually quite sweet and very aromatic. So just a little bit of oil, just a coat so that they have a little steam on them. And they're going on. I'm gonna start getting my oil heated up as well. Roughly like two cups of neutral oil. I am gonna do another thing of spam. It kind of looks like ground beef. As my oil is heating up, I'm gonna get all my spices ready. Some fennel that's gonna go in here. Some star anise here some coriander seed. Finally, I have some hing, which is made from a resin. You find it in a lot of Indian cooking and you want to make sure it really sizzles if you are gonna apply it to something like a nice heat on it. I'm gonna add in all of the onions and garlic carefully and my spices. We've got a nice sizzle going on. We'll just let that keep going, toast everything. Make sure that our onions and garlic end up being nice and golden brown. And once that happens, we're gonna turn it off and just let it infuse. I'm going to combine my Spam as well as some scallion, garlic, and ginger. So we're just gonna do a quick pulse again. You do want these relatively fine because they're going in raw into the sauce and we're just pouring the hot oil over it. So yes, it does cook a little bit, but it doesn't cook a lot. So you don't really want a raw thing of ginger in your mouth. Now I am adding my mixture into a larger bowl than you would think since once we pour the hot oil in it, everything will start bubbling rapidly and you don't want it to overflow. We're getting some nice browning at the edges. We don't want it to get too brown because it's going to sit in the hot oil a little longer. You want to get this to 325 at least before pouring. So chilies are ready. Remove the stems and then do a quick grind in your spice grinder. So the chili mixture is just going straight in with the Spam. And now the hot oil pouring. Oh, I am holding this with my hand. So we hope I actually get it in there. Yeah. So as you can see, it sizzled a lot and now it's stopped. I'm adding a little bit of sugar here and a little bit of fish sauce and a little bit of rice vinegar. Awesome, okay. So that's good. So we got our wontons boiling in here. You're just gonna boil them until they float and their wrappers are translucent. Because of the spam filling again, it's already cooked so you don't have to worry about doneness and if anything, you don't need to boil them to the ends of the earth. And unlike pasta, you do not need to salt this water. I have a very useful hot pot ladle here. So it's giant and great for ladling wonton. So you can see nice translucent skin, still intact. Ta -da -da. Obviously, the amount of chili sauce oil that you use is up to you. I use a lot because I love it. Some dill, and voila! All right, so final taste test. I'm super excited. 
Um, there's so much spam in here. I am like giddy like a child. I feel like I'm going back and eating like my afternoon snacks when I was in fifth grade. Really good, super flavorful, super fragrant. You get like a big whiff of all those spices that you infuse in the chili oil. You also get tons of dill, which is like such an aromatic, beautiful flavor. I feel like it just like coasts through the rest of the flavors. The Spam in the filling is nicely caramelized, so it feels nice and rich. And the Spam in the chili oil tastes like, you know, good old Spam. If you enjoyed this recipe, make sure to click below and you'll see the full recipe for both the Spam wonton filling as well as the Spam chili oil. I'll catch you next time. I love fish sauce. Um, I really like Red Boat. I just sprayed myself in the face with fish sauce. It's fine. I like fish sauce, but maybe not that. A little bit more fish sauce.